I grew up on the Cheyenne River Res, Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation. This is not Cheyenne Indians. These are Lakota people. Yeah, there's a river that goes on the south part of the reservation, and, and it's uh, named after two Cheyenne warriors. And they got lost uh, coming back from a um, trading pl uh, place somewhere near where the Missouri River meets the Mississippi River. There used to be a, a real old uh, ancient uh, trading place there where Indians would come there. And this is uh, a, you know, from all tribes, yeah. This is a pl when you come there, it's a place of peace. So you're supposed to leave your weapons down, and you come there, and then you, you know you you bring something to trade, and and you know. So this this is how things from let's say, for example, you know, North Carolina or something like that would end up there, or even California sometimes, because there, there's these trading places that were all over North America. And all of these places were considered places of peace. Yeah? When you enter there, you've got to lay your weapons down. You come in peace, and and you you know do you trade. Now, how how did we communicate back then? Because remember, uh, for those of you that don't know, every you know there are uh, let's see, what did they say one time? I re I read one time there were something like about a uh, close to a thousand different languages maybe even more, spoken in North America alone. Can you imagine that? So, uh, over a thousand different languages. These are all different cultures. See, we're not all the same. A lot of people think that just because we all have brown skin and long brown, long black hair that, that we're all the same thing, and we're not. Yeah, we're, we're, we're really different. Sometimes there might be one or two things or that might be similar, but overall we are vastly different from one another. And we have different languages, different um, uh, spirituality, different um, perspectives on a lot of different things. And so um, this is one of the reasons why there was a lot of... Um, uh, animosity sometimes between tribes and there were enemy tribes and people were you know constantly you know t uh, crossing boundaries I mean uh, borders and stuff like that I mean not that we had a you know checkpoint or anything like that but you know, there were there was territory yeah you know, that tribes had their territory and sometimes enemies would encroach on that and harass you know people so there would be conflicts and this goes to show you there was, it was not always peace. Yeah. So th there were many many different languages. Yeah. So when you come, like I said, when you come to these places of peace, you have to lay your weapons down, and you can trade. Now, how, like I said, how do you think they spoke to each other? Because everybody has their own language. Yeah. And, and languages they are not familiar. I mean, they are not similar. Yeah, like for example, uh, I'll give you a really good example. The Cheyenne Indians, um, we call them Shahiela, and of course, in their language, they call something else. But Lakota people and Cheyenne people have been allies since since uh, anybody can remember. Um, nobody knows how that started. Um, nobody knows the story, um, how this came to be. Um, but you know, here's the thing. If you compare the Lakota language to the Cheyenne language, it's, it's like oil and water, night and day. They don't even resemble each other one bit. Yeah, uh, They have their own ceremonies, they have their own perspective, but yet we are allies. We always were, even today. Yeah, Like, like for example, if I'm, um, let's say I'm traveling someplace and and I run into another Indian, and uh, I find out uh, he's Cheyenne, and I tell him I'm Lakota. W watch the expressions in our faces. It's going to be like we're long-lost friends. <laughs> that This is how it is. It's just that way. I, I don't can't really explain it, but it is just this way. And um, so, but how did we communicate? Yeah, how did we talk to one another if our languages were so different? How how did we how did this come? I mean, look at this: the Cheyenne, uh, Cheyenne people and Lakota people. The languages are completely different, just like Martians and and Earthlings. 
<laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> so how did we communicate with each other? Well, we had a really complex system. It's a sign language uh, system, and there's uh, honest to goodness, there's there's I don't know several several hundred um, gestures. I mean, there's a bunch of them. Um, it's a complex language, um, but um, you should see it. It's really cool. Yeah, there there are some there there is some old film footage from um, you know around I don't know uh, somewhere in the, the 1800s or so uh, where you see this where there's you know, there's two Indian guys they're they're reenacting something from the past. And you see them using sign language, and it's it's so cool the way the way it is, yeah. And this is how they understand each other. And um, there there is a book available on that. You can find it. I think it's still out there in reprint. It's just called American Indian Sign Language, and it, it it's an amazing book. Yeah, it's, I have it, and I looked through it, and I was like, geez, how in the heck did they learn how to do this? It's really difficult. But this is what they used. Yeah, all the all the tribes used this thing. So they found a common ground to communicate to each other in places that were designated uh, places of peace. I, I think about that. That's amazing. Yeah, back then that that we 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 didn't use our mouths. We used our bodies to talk to each other. Think about that. Yeah. I know um, years ago, in, in, um, they used to say that French was the diplomat's language. And so when they had these meetings at the United Nations and, and, and you know, the dipl all diplomats were required to speak French. It's still a spoken language. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of times with... Um, with with words, you know, we no, it doesn't matter what language it is, you can use it to trick other people, and um, so, you know, some people have tried to say, you know what, you can't do that in Indian language. Some people say, an Indian language is so sacred and everything and all that that you can't. There's no way in heck you can do that to the Indian language. It's just not possible. <laughs> Did you like my accent? <laughs> Yeah, there is. There is a way to do it. How 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 do you think you had all these code talkers in World War Two? It wasn't just Navajos that were doing this. There was there was several tribes that were that had these code talkers, and Lakota was one of them. They used the language to deceive the enemy. So you see, in spoken language, you can use it to deceive others. Yeah. So, uh, but think about that with the body. Yeah, you know, using hand gestures. You know, I, I think this is. I think this this really um you know you, you, to when you're thinking in your mind you, let's say you're you're talking with somebody and um both of you com are speaking completely different languages and and then you know but both of you know the sign language yeah and so you start doing these gestures to each other like that and but this is connecting to your mind and I think that that adds uh, uh an interesting character to the communication that's going on. Yeah, I think this is. Uh, I um. I think you know. Uh, I don't know how to really explain it too clearly, but I really think that this adds something, or, and it's it's um, you know, to to get your point across that there's you know if if whatever your intention is behind your words. You know, if you say you're 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 gonna do something, or you want something, or or you want to trade, or you know you're telling the news, or or whatever it is, and you're doing all this with your hands and not your words, not I mean not your mouth. I, I, that's interesting to think about. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a, it is still communication, but I think you know I mean look back when you know we're we're talking about at the most recent. Um, early 1800s, yeah, early 1800s will probably be the most recent time that these kind of things were done because the United States was not that far west yet. 
also Indian tribes in the Great Plains were still doing this. And uh, I just think that's, I think that there's something outstanding about that. And it's not just because I'm Indian, they're Indian. No, the fact that you have people from different nations and they're they're talking to each other and they're using hand gestures to say, oh, this is, hey, this is what's going on in our territory. You know, the, the, there's this the United States uh, government coming this way and they're building you know something you know they're building this thing and it's it's uh, scaring all the animals away and and um it's you know and, you know all this kind of communication that they're passing this to other tribes and then that that news we know this is going to affect all people you know that uh, all indian peoples so they pass it on to the other tribes so then you have um Let's say, for example, um, let's let's talk about like about the time. Um, um, let's go to Ohio, for example, okay? And uh, for those of you that uh, are really bad in geography, like me, and think that Ohio is uh, right next to Florida, <laughs> see, not that bad. <laughs> It's somewhere east, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it's right on top of Florida. I think I think it's a little bit north from there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> see, that's really bad geography. <laughs> anyway, just think, yeah. Just imagine, okay, somewhere in the east, okay. And and they're they're starting to build this train, this railroad train. And so the Indians there, they they see this and they see that it's going to affect a lot of things. Um, you know, Indians have traveled by train to Washington D.C. Uh, to sign treaties or to to um, you know make agreements or whatever. And one of the things that the the um, president or other uh, politicians or military people have done is they always escorted these chiefs to uh, throughout the military um, places so that they they were trying to psych you know uh, to psych down or psych out the Indians by saying look at look at how much we have look at how big our army is look at the weapons that we have you have no choice. Yeah, you eventually you're going to have to surrender. This is the the, the subliminal uh jeez, how the heck do you say that word? Subliminal. No. Subliminal. There we go. <laughs> that that word that uh, they don't really say anything, but you know what they're saying? <laughs> that word. I can't even say that. I can't believe that. I used to be able to say that word really good, and I can't even do it. <laughs> oh, heck, anyway. <laughs> but th that's what they did, yeah? And and so when they come back to the reservation, uh, where the, not, there, there wasn't any reservations yet. So when they came back to their territories, they know what's going to happen. Yeah, they know that the, the American army, the, the military is, is huge, and they got a lot of weapons, and they really don't stand too much of a chance. They know these things, so there's this feeling of of despair. Yeah, and and you know, and then when when these Indians from other tribes are saying, "Shoot, they're building something. It looks like it's a train." Yeah. And when they see that this this train could take a lot of people, a lot of weapons, a lot of guns, and whatever, you know, deep into Indian territory, um, and, and there could really be a problem. So you have the Indians in the East seeing this firsthand. So then they ride out west to the you know the tribe that is bordering them. And then they talk to each other through sign language, this uh, with the hands, yeah, the uh, American Indian sign language. They they start talking to each other with using this language and, and saying this is what's going to happen, yeah. So they have to create new words now, yeah, with their with the sign language. They have to create something new to describe 
this train. And what what this translated into in many, many Indian language languages was the iron horse. Yeah, that's 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 what the, that's what they were calling it. It was an iron horse, and so uh, it, that tribe then rides. You know, uh, they send their riders in different directions, and then they go to their neighboring tribes. And remember, these are all enemies. Okay, they they don't like each other, but there's something coming that's going to affect the the life of all Indian people in really a not too good way. So now they're warning everybody. Yeah, they're telling everybody there's something coming. At the same time, you have um, holy people from different tribes that are receiving visions of the same thing. Yeah, they're receiving, um, you know, they see things in in their um, whether if it, whether it's a dream or maybe they're in the ceremony and they're doing something and all of a sudden they see this. Uh, they see uh, this train coming. They see um, what's coming after that, and so then they they have to get their people ready as they tell them, um, you know, that that this this is going to happen. And and um, so you look at all the all the all the um, avenues of communication here. That for like I, I was mentioning with the sign language, and then with some people getting visions of this. And I think that's really, really interesting. Yeah, that that um that didn't just rely on on on, you know, what you can see in front of you um, um when you're awake, meaning the sign language. But that there were people that were receiving visions of this, that they were you know, that this thing is coming and, and talking about how um you know, people are going to be living in squares, and and, and um, this was really interesting, um, and that was seen as something not good. That that was seen as a, a sad time coming upon Indian people, is when we're going to be living in squares. That's interesting. Yeah, that's really really interesting to the way it's spoken. Yeah, when you hear these stories. Um, uh, whether it's passed down from generation to generation in one family, or whether you read it in a book or, or whatever, but that's a common theme that you hear. Yeah, is that trouble is coming? We're going to be soon. Soon we're going to be living in squares. They would they would say, and that really, really was impacted. That that was really a big impact on their mind. To live in a square is it just was like that's not right. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I really find that interesting. And but here, you know, here we are today. We're like we, we don't think it's such a big deal because that's all you see today. Yeah. <laughs> that's our earliest memory is in in in, in the baby crib. And, and what is it? It's, it's square. Yeah. <laughs> our house. Yeah. Our schoolroom. Our classroom. The the bathroom, everything is everything is in a square, and when Indians from back then, for them to to fathom that, was really troublesome. It was disturbing, yeah, because it's it's something not complete about that, and so this is um, I just find that fascinating, yeah, that that. Um, Today we take these things for granted because we see this everywhere we go. Right? Wherever we go, everything is, is 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 in a box. Everything is square. Everything has four corners, and this is um, what we're used to. Yeah. So then, us modern Indians, when we go into a building that's circular, we go, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> but for our ancestors, that's normal, yeah. But for I, I, I think I think we better think about that. <laughs> anyway, um, those are just my thoughts, yeah, concerning that. Um, but getting back to, geez, I, I meandered like crazy here, and I apologize for that. I know I can I can get like that when I eat a little bit too much chocolate. <laughs> 
when I, I don't just eat M and M's, I eat M and M and M and M. Oh heck. <laughs> Yeah, but the, getting back to this places of peace, this is this is what I found found was really interesting. Yeah, this um, uh, when, when there were several of these places in America, um, I should say North American continent, because it I just that to me is I don't know. There's something about that because imagine that because you, you're in a location. And there's Indians from all kinds of different tribes, and they all look different, yeah. Because you're seeing uh, Mohawks, for example, from the uh, northeast part of the country, and maybe you're seeing uh, Miccosukee Indians from Florida. There, maybe you're seeing, you know, some Cherokees or, um, you know, some um, who was that in down in uh, Alabama area. Um, what are those people called again? Shoot, I forgot what they're called. Um, but anyway, um, you know, you see, they all have a different way of dressing because that's part of their cultural identity. So just imagine being in a location like that where you have Indians from all these different tribes, all these different nations, and they're coming together for the one purpose, and that's to trade. And this is a communication, yeah? Uh, you're interacting with with somebody you're 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 um you're trading you're you're giving you know something that's that's normal to you or something that is from your land um or something you made that's made out of materials or whatever animals from your territory and you're trading with another indian who comes from a different part of the continent and he's done the same thing too you know, from from um, the animals or the plants or whatever, from from wherever he's at, and these things, uh, you know, serve purposes. Uh, you know, people need these kind of things for whatever, and so they trade. Yeah, and and while they're doing this, they're they're doing you know the sign language. This was a universal language among all Indians back then. Can you just imagine that? We had a universal language. Yeah, and. When did we use this universal language? We used it in times of peace, but also in times of trouble. Yeah, when something was coming that was going to affect the next Indian tribe, and then the next one after that, and after that, and after that, and after that, and so on, and so on, and so on. The language was used to um, bind each other to each other, yeah. It, to 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 um, it, it went beyond uh, culture. Is what I'm saying. Do you know? What I mean? do, you, do you know? Do you know what I mean? It 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 goes beyond, um, you know, the the um, the style of clothes you're wearing, the the um, how you wear your hair, how you um, how you are. Um, you know, what, whatever warrior society you belong to and, and stuff like that, the sign language goes beyond that. This was a form of communication that went beyond the culture, identity. So we had this concept. Yeah? And I think we can learn from that today because today we do have something in common. Still. It's the English language. But I think we have to be careful with that, yeah? Because um, when when you're going to use it in an unhealthy way, um, then I think it's you have to you have to watch it because in this uh, natural law that we have called in Lakota called Wawokia, you know that what you do, you know that that's going to come back. That's going to come back around stronger. Four times as strong. Whatever it is, whether it's whether it's good or bad, it's going to come back four times that kind of energy. Whatever it is. So, I think you know we we should really think about that. That you know that there's there is a way that we can bind ourselves to each other, and if that way exists, then shouldn't we be using it in a healthy way? <laughs> 